morning. Uh, I'm Megan. This is Matt, one of the founders of Kids Strong, and this is Building Stronger Kids. Ba Bam! Oh man! Tyler, <laughs> that's when you're supposed to show your muscles. Are we supposed to do it too? Okay. <laughs> I'm just kidding. I made it up. Um, today, I'm super excited about our guest. His name is Tyler Clutch, and he is a former Dallas Cowboy, and most importantly, a father of four under nine. Under, yeah, eight and under. Our eight oldest is eight. Yeah. yeah, so four under eight. Eight and under, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so one of the reasons we wanted to make sure to get Tyler uh, on the show is because Tyler has an awesome story of how he made it into the NFL. It wasn't, you know, <laughs> all glitz and glamour and how he got there. And, you know, one of the things I've always admired about Tyler is his story. And I think that transfers over into how he's raising his kids. There's a lot of valuable life lessons there. And, you know, one big compliment to Tyler is anybody I've talked to that played with Tyler, you know, there's always value that players have that they bring to the team on the field. And then there's value that players bring to the culture and off the field and setting the tone. And, you know, without question, everyone that played with Tyler always brags about, like, how it was a huge loss to the Cowboys culture when Tyler wasn't playing there anymore just because of the energy and the passion and the drive that he brought to the team in the locker room. And, you know, I think that makes him a better father. And it's one of the things that we've always really admired about you. And that's, that's one of the reasons we want to have you on here is because throughout your career, you've seen, you know, athletes at every level. Uh, and you yourself have had to fight mm -hmm. for a lot to get to the NFL. And I think there's just a lot of valuable life lessons there, you know, you can take away with, you know, because you've played with so many players that I would say some uh, have really displayed sportsmanship, mm -hmm. some maybe not as much. And that probably all transfers down into how you raise your kids. And you know, mm -hmm. that's what we'd love to learn from. Well, thank you so much, man. That's that's one of the nicest things anyone's ever said about me. Um, I don't know. I don't know how true it was that there was actual loss when I left the Cowboys, but thank you for saying that. That means a lot. So, what are some of the things you think that your career and you know mm -hmm. you've learned, kind of fighting your way into the NFL? Like, how mm -hmm. does that transfer over to how you raise your kids? Um, you know, honestly, I think, uh, ultimately when you instill gratitude, uh, you know, I think that there's so many blessings that, that we all have, um, just one living where we live, right. And having the freedoms that we have, um, being able to pursue the dreams that, you know, a four-year-old kid in Vacaville, California set for himself and had the ability to pursue that. So for me, because of, of the journey that I took and, you know, going and playing in Canada and playing in the arena league and the UFL and all those things, you know, the gratitude for every second that I had available. Um, and so as a parent, it, you know, we, we live in a culture that just has, right. We have a lot, there's a lot of things that, um, even, even our generation, we didn't have to struggle for like maybe our parents' generation or the generation before them. Um, so really trying to show them that, um, hard work really does, uh, yield so many benefits because of the appreciation and gratitude for the results on the other side of it, rather than just, Hey, I, I, a click of a button, I get what I want. Now, trust me, there's definitely benefits to, you know, Amazon prime and, and shopping and stuff like that. But our culture is very much one click away from everything that they want. Um, and so as a parent, I really, and, and my wife and I, Tiffany really try to instill that, um, you know, not everyone has that and, and it won't always be this way. And I think this recent time has shown that, that, you know, we can't take everything for granted. And so when you approach life with gratitude, uh, and you try to instill that in your kids, I think on the other side, um, you can be a better servant. You can be just a better person. So one of the things I think, you know, that I always take away from hearing your story is, is things that I can help my kids with, you know, sportsmanship specifically. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So I think you probably have seen, like we said, players that really displayed that yeah. and then players that did not. And can mm -hmm. you talk a little bit about like how those mm -hmm. played out in the higher levels? Yeah. So again, every level, everyone, everyone's different. I think, um, you know, I think I mentioned gratitude, like being grateful to be there allows your sportsmanship just to be 
uh, just different because one, you realize that you're lucky enough to have the physical ability to play a game, right? And we're talking about the highest level now. You know, you get to play a game for a living and that perspective um, just has a, a different level of appreciation. Now there's a difference between sportsmanship and competitiveness, right? Like you can absolutely have both. Some of the strongest competitors that I've ever been around, you know, the, the Jason Wittens, the Matt Fortes, the Tony Romos, um, the, the uh, JJ Watts, those guys had a, a unbelievable level of competitiveness, but their sportsmanship was second to none. Yeah. Like, you know, they, you know, get really feisty during a game, but when it came to it, they appreciated every second that they were on that field and it rep and it showed, um, you know, when it came to sportsmanship, because the, to me, a guy can be respected for his ability on the field, right? A lot of that is, a lot of that is God given. Um, and, and then, but then how you handle that, how you handle yourself off the field, how you handle yourself as a leader in the locker room, how you handle yourself playing against your competitor. Um, those are the men that I respect the most. And I look, you know, like I mentioned, you know, Matt Forte, Josh McCown, Justin Forsett, guys like that, that made more of an impact on me than maybe the most talented guys in the locker room. And that was because of sportsmanship. Yeah. And I love, <clears throat> I love some of the things that you're hitting on. Um, mm -hmm. And, you know, we, we talk to you about kids strong all the time. And I mm -hmm. think one of the things that, we love about Kid Strong is how much we we pour into the character. Mm -hmm. um, Matt, Matt and I always say nobody nobody's gonna want an athletic jerk, right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't matter how athletic you are, um, if if you're just like you said, if you don't have that gratitude, and mm -hmm. if you're not a leader off the floor, right? Or yeah, off that's right. And I think that's something that. I know that you instill in your kids and I think we're trying to as well. Um, you, and I love that you said competitiveness is, is not the same as sportsmanship mm -hmm. because I want my kids to be competitive. Mm -hmm. Ella is five and she hates to lose. Yeah. And I love that because I think mm -hmm. that goes into life, right? She's going to pursue and, and want to be the best at everything. But then on the flip side, if she, if she does lose, I want her mm -hmm. to be able to handle that with grace. That's right. But I do love that you said compet you can be competitive and mm -hmm. still be a good sport. Well, and, and losing is part of it. Losing is yeah. a part of learning and, and everything. But like you said, being able to, to maybe take a loss or take a, um, a learning opportunity and, and focusing that energy instead of, you know, throwing a tantrum, being a poor sport, doing those things, you can say, okay, how do I learn from this and how do I get better next time? That's the competitive side of it. And that's, and my daughter's the same way. My eight year old is like, no matter what we do, like she is so competitive. And one of the things that we just always try to talk with her instead of getting upset and maybe, you know, taking a step back is okay. Hey, take a breath. Let's realize what we did. Okay. Let's realize maybe why we lost or maybe why we didn't reach the level of success that we were trying to. Okay. What can we do differently next time to better ourselves? And she's done a great job with it. Still working on my six-year-old. He's uh, <laughs> he's uh, he tends to uh, pull back and uh, and you know kind of curl up in a ball a little bit. But you know, he's growing. He's getting better. Him, so that might be a. Remember, we talked about the boys. Yes, boys are the same. I know. I know. They're wusses. They are. Wusses. <laughs> uh, so one of the things I think you know for parents, their their kids are entering sports. Mm -hmm. This is new territory for them. Yeah, and. You know, there's a couple of things we hit on with new parents and we, you know, we see a lot of parents really focus on, is my kid a good athlete or is yeah. my kid super smart in school? Mm -hmm. But a lot of research is showing that the social and emotional development is actually mm -hmm. the most important. Yeah. I think, you know, in sports, social and emotional development equals sportsmanship. Mm -hmm. You know, when you think about like those leaders you played with, they probably had a very high level of social and emotional development, emotional mm -hmm. control, yeah. you know, perspective. Mm -hmm. So when you think about like parents and having kids enter these sports, you know, what are, what's some of the advice you can mm -hmm. give them as, yeah. they're, as they're kind of getting their feet wet? Well, I think first and foremost, and, and this is, I think applies to every level, whether, you know, you're in youth sports or you're in professional sports. Um, the number one factor to development to me is passion. 
and you have to, and you have to like, and you have to enjoy the sport. And too often I see parents get really involved and they want their kid to be the best kid. Um, they want them to, you know, score the most goals. They want them to be the smartest. They want them to be the lead in the, in the play. But ultimately if they're doing those activities because they're being forced to, or they're being told that that's, that is their value. Mm -hmm. um, they're not going to want to self-develop. They're not going to want to progress. And so for me, I was really lucky. My dad, uh, you know, his only rule is if you start something, you finish it. Um, I'm not going to ever make you do anything. Um, but so he let me find my own path and, uh, and sports was one of those outlets for me and, and he supported me, but it was because I chose to do it. I wanted to do it. I wanted to be at practice every day, early working hard. I want to do those things. And I was supported and I felt like, okay, Hey, there's recognition and there's, uh, you know, my parents are, are, are celebrating me for doing those things. Um, but it was because of me that. I took on the initiative to do it myself. I mean, I was eight years old and I love football so much. I had to lose 25 pounds at, at eight years old just to play Pop Warner football. And it was one of those things. My dad never said a word about making weight, but tell you what, he was there after weigh-ins with a big bag of egg McMuffins and hash browns and orange juice every time I weighed in. So and you had it, to gain 25 pounds? No, lose 25 okay. pounds. And I didn't eat as, a, as an eight, eight-year-old. I had to, you know, I couldn't. I was eating lettuce and ice chips, you know, three or four days before, <laughs> before weigh-ins. And so, but it was because that was on me and I, and, and I chose to do that, but there was such a, there was such a different approach. And there were so many kids that I played with that their parents forced them to do things and, and the joy of the sport and the joy of the game was taken from them. So, you know, they hit a point and they could go to all the private lessons that they wanted to, but there was a point where they just, they didn't care anymore and they were just burnt out. So I just encourage parents to, um, to uh, encourage their kids to have fun and enjoy it. And, you know, not every sport is going to be for your kid. Not every activity is going to be for your kid. Um, but encourage them to pursue the things that they're passionate about. And it might take a while. I mean, I know mm -hmm. I didn't, you know, <laughs> my mom always had me in cheerleading and dance and gymnastics. Mm -hmm. And she said one day, I don't know, I was like 10, and I said, I want to play basketball. Mm -hmm. And she said, I didn't take you serious, but I let you play. And then literally I played until college, right? Yeah. Um, I, I no, I, that's the thing, I wasn't. <laughs> it's like my mom like assumed like, oh, she's a girl, she's gonna cheerlead. Mm -hmm. But I hated it. And once she put once she let me start basketball, like I took off mm -hmm. and I loved it. And I played summer leagues and traveled and played ball, but you might not know what your mm -hmm. child really wants to do until a little bit later either. Yeah, like you don't have right. to start sports at three. Mm -hmm. um, I know our, our son, uh, you know, Matt played football and I played basketball, but our son is four and he can hit a baseball without a tee like it's nothing. And we're Aww. like, holy crap. He also just loves to hit stuff. Yeah, but we're yeah. like space. Lam we're like lamps, siblings. Like, we we just wouldn't have we wouldn't have put him in baseball. Yeah. But mm. he really he really yeah. likes to hit mm. the ball in the bat. So mm. we're like, oh well, maybe in a few years. We'll, I, I you think know. two parents rush into it. Yeah. And there's a know. lot of high level athletes that really didn't. I mean, pl even play multiple sports in high school. Yes. Mm -hmm. So when you have a seven year old and you have them on the path to the NFL, like it's really setting that kid up for failure. It really is. It really is. And I think, you know, for multiple reasons, you know, uh, I think one is, is sports are designed to teach life lessons. Nobody's going to be able to play a sport for their entire life or even a majority of their life for that matter. You know, I was lucky enough to play football for 20, almost 27 years. Um, and that's a fraction of my life. Yeah. Uh, and, and, but what I learned from organized sports, from individual sports, from all of those things and the things that I took, um, that's, what's going to carry me on. And here's the thing is if you are, if your child is going to a sport and they're getting there and they just can't wait until practice is over so they can leave, mm -hmm. they're going to miss all of the lessons that are taught mm -hmm. from that sport yeah. and they're not going to see that. So that's one. And then two, I know Matt, you talked about 85% of the NFL played multiple sports in high school. They were not sport specific. And there's multiple reasons for that. And you guys talk about this a lot. And these were one of the early conversations, Matt, you and I had 
about the cross training aspect of it and being a, a multi-range athlete and the benefits that basketball carries over to football and the benefits that wrestling carries over to football or the benefits that track carries over to baseball. I mean, there's so many things that like you, you one become a more resilient athlete, but then two, you become a better functional athlete. Um, and so, you know, there, there's that aspect too, but then also to getting, getting a break. If you play baseball year round, mm -hmm. I mean, there's, you don't get a chance to be a kid and there is a really, really big, um, a, a really big deal with just being allowed to be a kid and going and playing and letting the creative juices flow and going out and building a fort or, you know, going out and doing it, whatever you do as, as a child, you know, but there's a big, I, I just feel like our culture now is, is so results oriented. We're all, we're so focused on it. And so you know, we have our kids in travel ball at eight years old and, you know, summertime they're, they're playing, they're playing baseball and then fall they're playing football and then they go right into basketball season and they go right into baseball season again. And they're like back to back to back to back. And it's like, how sustainable is that for a child when he cannot just unplug, check out and just go have fun? Yeah. I think one of the red flags we see too, in a lot of sportsmanship, I think really starts at home. Mm -hmm. And, you know, if, if a parent is telling their kids that it's the coach's fault, that mm -hmm. they're not playing, mm -hmm. if, if the parent is using language like this isn't fair, mm -hmm. you know, the umpires don't know what they're doing, you know, you should be starting, you should be doing this. I think a lot of that is just really setting the kids up mm -hmm. for failure and mm -hmm. uh, coming from, coming from, you know, professional sports. Let's say your kids are in a sport now. Yeah. You know, what's your advice to parents? Like, how involved should they be? You know, what mm -hmm. kind of language should they use? You know, mm -hmm. working with the coach, things like that. Well, I'll just speak to, to my experience because, you know, I, I don't have the answer for, for every parent, for every situation. Because I think every situation is different. But from, from my perspective, my dad very much, and my mom too, came from a supportive role. And, and for them, um, I, I mean, I never knew they were there until after the game when, I, when they were there to either, you know, give me a hug if I had a bad game or to celebrate me with, um, you know, after a good game. And here's the thing. And, you know, as, as a parent, if, if you don't think that your kid is getting the opportunity, um, I've been on the coaching side of youth sports and it <laughs> coaches, coaches – Coaches have a hard job. They really do. Like you want to give everybody an opportunity. You want to get them to play. Um, but there's only so much bandwidth in the fast pace and getting this kid in and getting that kid. And they got to make sure he has this opportunity. Um, you know, the kids that, that listen, that follow directions, have good sportsmanship. Those are the kids that I think of that coaches think of first. That, okay, come on, come on, get in, get in. If yeah. I've got to spend time, extra time away from coaching other kids to make sure that the other, you know, maybe this one individual who is throwing a tantrum or is not listening, or I've got to, I've got to line him up and tell him the same thing 10 times in a row. Like I'm going to be probably more hesitant to focus on him because there's, a, you know, other kids that we've got to deal with. Um, but as a parent, what, what frustrates me is I watch these parents complain and um, say, oh, my kid's not getting enough time. But then when they go home, they're not spending any time helping their child develop. Right. And they're not because the kids are starving for attention. I know my six-year-old, all he wants to do is go play catch. Mm -hmm. And there's so many times it's like, especially with this COVID and I'm here and dad's home and it's always playtime, right? When dad's home. And you know, it's like it's, I'm, in the, I'm in the middle of a call or I'm this, and he wants to play catch, but like starving just for our attention. And there's so much development that can happen. So, you know, as, as result oriented as we are as a culture, let's take a look at that and let's, let's, let's help develop our kid and pour into him and give him the confidence. Here's an example um, is, is we played basketball when my son had just turned five um, and he was playing with some kids that were a little bit older than him and just really kind of struggled, didn't get it. And he you know, threw a tantrum on the court a couple of times because he didn't want to run and he didn't want to do this. And, um, and, and that was one that I was coaching and it, it was a hard season for him, but we just kept working. We kept working. We got him a hoop and we we're just practicing outside, but it was on, you know, Hey, do you want to go play basketball? 
yeah, I want to go play. He wants to play. So we came and then we moved up to Salina and, uh, and we joined a league up here. And in, I'm not kidding you, six months, he was a completely different kid. He went from honestly probably the worst kid on the team to the best kid on the team just because we spent time together and we played and focused on development and focused on being positive. And, and instead of crying, okay, hey, let's learn how to dribble correctly. Let's learn how to take a shot. Let's turn how to run up and down the court. Let's, you know, let's learn how to play some defense. And he is obsessed with playing basketball now yeah. because you pour into your kids and you spend the time with them. And that's what, that's what they want. They just want time with you. They do. They yeah. Do. I think one of the things, one of the reasons we try to be so multifaceted at Kitchron is because if, if you can make sports fun, so like if they have the skills, mm -hmm. it's just so much more fun than if they're getting like their butt kicked. Yeah. They're uncoordinated. They can't run. So, you know, for us, a big thing, you know, early on with Ella <clears throat> is like, if we can make her really athletic than any sport, it's going to be fun for her. So yeah. She's going to lean into that. Yep. But if she's not, and we saw this a lot, especially when we, were, when, when we first started, parents would have a kid that would go from playing video games, you know, six hours a day, mm -hmm. then throw him into a sport, you know, and then I nice. feel like he hated it. Yeah, he wasn't good at it, <clears throat> and then that retreats back. You know, then it ends up being a terrible experience. He's yeah, like a teammate, and then they just want to go back. You know, to mm -hmm. play video games, but it wasn't the kid's fault. Like he had mm -hmm. none of the tools. You know, to really enjoy it. That's right. That's right. And you know, there's there's lessons I think in in, in both of those because you know we're going to get knocked down a lot in life, and there's there's you know whether you're starting a new career not necessarily going to be fun because there's a learning curve you start a business right like a leap of faith i mean there's a lot of there's a lot of things that kids strong that you guys went through you know moving to a new town and there was a, there was a lot of things i'm sure you guys learned that were probably not the funnest thing but the resilience of it i mean the appreciation now the gratitude for it as i mentioned earlier is is at an all-time high because now you've learned those lessons now you've learned those skills you've developed so there is a lesson in resiliency, like whenever you start something new, you're never going to be great at it. I mean, right. there's a very, very small population that just can do anything that they want, whether it's athletically, intellectually, um, emotionally, there's a learning curve. But like you said, if you start to pour into our children early on and give them the skills, the athleticism, the character, and again, that's what I love about Kids Strong is the focus on character because that's going to last so much longer than they can play sports. Um, you know, you, you pour into those things early on. Now they're free to enjoy it for what it is. Mm -hmm. Like, go be competitive. Go be a leader. Go learn. I mean, if you're a team captain, like the, the likelihood of you being a leader later on in life right. within a community is so much greater. And so – and. Yes, like you can be I – mean, here, you mentioned, you know, me and the Cowboys and it was a culture thing. Like, like I didn't contribute on the field like a lot of the other guys. Like the, I, it wasn't me. Um, but there is – there has to be a level of contribution for guys to respect you mm -hmm. and for there to be that level of respect to be a team captain or to be a team leader. Um, and so the more you develop early on, the more you pour into it, the more nimble you can be, the more you can follow different paths, uh, to becoming just a better, a better person. Yeah. I'm glad you're hitting on that too, because <clears throat> I know that, you know, Vanessa, is it Vanessa Williams, the tennis player? Venus, said, um, Venus or Serena? Venus Williams. Vanessa, Vanessa Williams, the singer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Uh, anyways, uh, she always says, you know, she's going to put her kids in sports, not because she wants them to be the best, but because of mm -hmm. all the life lessons that she learned. That's right. That's right. <clears throat> and I think, I think there is so many life lessons to learn from sports. I mean, obviously I'm not a professional sports player by any means, but I learned a lot of my confidence through playing mm -hmm. sports as well. And like mm -hmm. you said, if you're a captain of a team, then, you know, you're setting yourself up to hopefully mm -hmm. be a leader of maybe a mm -hmm. company one day, right? Mm -hmm. And so I think as parents, too, like, we have to look at sports, not just is my kid the best at this sport, but what is my kid learning through it? And I know th through us putting Ella in Kid Strong and, you know, she played some flag football. She was the only girl, but she did it. 
but her confidence is just through the roof, sometimes mm -hmm. too high. And I honestly believe it's through play and sports and putting her in those situations that she has developed that independence and that confidence mm -hmm. needed for later in life. Mm -hmm. By the way, there's no such thing as your daughter having too much confidence. That's, <laughs> That's true. You're that right. is a good thing. I'll, I'll, that I'll is a good thing. One of the takeaways I think, you know, for parents is kids that have good sportsmanship mm -hmm. end up being kids that are that, that employers want to hire. Yeah. That's right. They also end up being kids that can start and lead things mm -hmm. later in life. Yeah. And mm -hmm. I've never, you know, I've never witnessed a kid that is a huge, you know, poor sport like that that has worked out that that's paid off later in life. That's right. You know, I think, you know, our goal was, you know, I would love for Ella to be the team captain, not because she's the best, right. but mm -hmm. because she's the best to be the captain. That's right. You know, the leadership, the dependability, the putting mm -hmm. the team first. That's you know, right. That's just the most valuable thing, you know, for us we could bring to her. That's exactly right. And and here's I'll say this too about like team captains and, and you said that employers want to hire, but that also will probably one day be leading organizations yeah. as well, because the accountability as, as a team captain, right? You set the example, you know, and, and we all remember team captains. We had some were good, some were maybe not, you know, to me, the best leaders were the ones that did and didn't have to talk a whole lot. And when they did, you wanted to hear what they had to say. Um, but the ones that just led by example. And and the thing about being a team captain is you're not missing workouts. You're not missing practice. You're not missing the extra film sessions. You're not missing those because there's a level of accountability that comes with that. Um, and, and I 100% agree with you, Matt. Like they could, I don't necessarily care if my kids are the best players on the field. Like uh, that doesn't, it doesn't mean anything to me, but the ones that their team looks to for leadership when times are tough, mm -hmm. that have the resilience to, to battle through tough situations and, and lead. Because to me, I won a state championship as, a, uh, as an individual in wrestling, but I also, in my senior year of high school, won a, state ch or a, you know, a section championship. That's as far as we could go in California in football. That team, that team championship was so much greater than the individual championship because what that meant was, is that as a group, as, um, as a, a bunch of young men on the football team, the leaders of that group, and there, was, and there was a handful of us, we brought other men, young men, to a higher level than they would have brought themselves. And there was something so much more, uh, there was something so much more gratifying in that championship than the individual championship. Because I, I loved working hard. Like, I just, I loved it. Like, that wasn't an issue for me. But to be able to work hard and for that to be contagious for other people to work hard, like, there was, there was some gratitude there. or There was a, a higher level of appreciation there for sure than the individual championship. That's awesome. Yeah. Tyler, that was this. I love this conversation. <laughs> we could go on and on and on. All day. I know. I know. I know. Uh, I'll say this, though, guys. Hey, I, I really appreciate, like, everything that you guys have done just for our family and, and our kids. Um, I know we don't get to see each other a ton, but even, you know, through this this pandemic and in the online classes, my kids love doing the, you know, the classes themselves. We throw a mat out in front of the TV. Um, but there's just so many lessons that they've learned from that. And we talked about leadership and just, you know, some of the activities that you're doing through the classes and giving each child the opportunity to lead other kids and to, to run a drill. I mean, that has helped our kids more than, than I could ever explain in words. And so just what you guys are doing, you know, here locally in, in the Dallas area, but now nationally and the reach that you guys have. Um, I mean, you're building stronger kids, you know, in all aspects of the word. So thank you guys so much. Yeah, we're, we're trying and, um, you know, we're, we're all, it. we're all parents. So we all need mm -hmm. all the help we can get. Right. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> awesome. Tyler, thank you so much for talking to yeah. us. No, thank you guys for having me anytime. Thanks, Tyler. All right. We'll all see right. you next time. Bye. Bye guys. Bye.